time. I make people mad. I don't know why I'm such a nice guy, but I make people mad sometimes, a lot of the time, <laughs> and trying to get them to understand this and calling them hypocrites, calling them um, fools for not doing this homework, not studying it, and it makes them mad. But the minute you prove it yourself, all I'm giving you is here's where they can find the proof. Once you prove it yourself, it's no longer Joe Dumas' teaching. It's now part of Torah, and you can see it. It's, it's plain as day. Yeah. So everyone needs to go and prove this themselves. Get the book, Remembering the Sabbatical Year 2016. Take the notes. Go to your Bible and prove this stuff, and you can. You, then you'll know it. You'll own it. It'll belong to you. Yeah. Anyway, carry on. Well, and that—that's the whole thing. I mean, as as I started to look into it, it was like, you know, it just—it it was kind of like the whole journey for us into Torah. It just all—all all of a sudden, our Bible that we have had our whole life began to make sense. And so then, when 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 I, you know, came upon what you were saying. And I and I started to look into that and, and read up on it and study it. It just it even it even began to make more sense. And and so what I was saying is the thing that really stood out to me about the sabbatical cycles and how important they are to understand Torah is the fact that they they are shown in so many different things that would seem to have nothing to do with sabbatical years, like like the count to Shavuot. You know, a lot of the rabbis mm-hmm. and a lot of messianics and Hebrew roots people do not count correctly because they count from the wrong day. But when you use the the same ideology behind sabbatical cycles, it, it is perfect. It makes perfect sense. It shows you exactly when the right feast day is. And and I just man, when I saw that, I started to think, this is crazy. I mean, this literally is you know, it, it is a clock. It literally is like a clock. It just it does the same thing over and over and over again. And once you learn how to tell time, you know what time it is, right? And that's. That's the sabbatical and jubilee cycles. It's it's the clock of of Yehovah, and once you learn how to read His clock, it just everything begins to be very clear. <laughs> That's right. So the, the the key verse that you said, Second Kings nineteen twenty nine. Yes. That and but you only mentioned the sabbatical cycles. The other part of that verse is also telling you when the jubilee year is. Yes. And when you know that, you can come forward, and you'll know when the next jubilee year is today. Well, yes. I mean, not today. It's not. It is not. N O T not. <laughs> Twenty seventeen, like a lot of the old Daniel timeline people are still hanging on to, but the next jubilee year is twenty forty five, yeah. And the forty ninth year is twenty forty four. So in the book, remembering the spotted year twenty sixteen, we go into the chronology of man. And we show you the whole history of man according to the Sabbath and Jubilee cycles, and. We show, we lay it out for you so you can understand it, so you can see it. Now, I got a, a letter here tonight. Someone says my chronology is wrong. I said, well, go ahead and try and prove it wrong. I've had hundreds of people try, <laughs> and they've all proven it right. Generally, when someone writes me, is they've got a chronology that theirs is wrong, and they've missed a couple key verses, and I can point them out pretty quick. But... Knowing when the sabbatical and jubilee years are and understanding the Daniel 9 prophecy. Here's the key. This is the part that you need to understand. The Daniel 9 prophecy, the 70 weeks are 70 jubilee cycles, and they started at the burning bush. They started when Moses was talking at the burning bush. And you can only know when that was by doing the chronology in Genesis. Because the year they entered the promised land, Leviticus 25.2 says in the year you come into the land, the land shall have a rest. Mm-hmm. That's a jubilee year. So you're only told two jubilee years in the entire Bible. Levit- Leviticus 25.2 and 2 Kings 19.29. Those two jubilees must match up with each other. Once you've figured that out, and we show you how to do that in the book, once you've got that figured out, then you'll know that from the burning bush, when Moses was talking to Jehovah at the burning bush to go and get his people, 70 jubilee cycles later brings you to where we are now, 2045. So read Daniel 9, and it says seven jubilee cycles, or seven weeks. That's when King David starts to reign and restoring Jerusalem. And then 62 weeks after that brings you to 1996, the last jubilee year. Yeah. So here's the key part. 
Yes, you're right about the Second Kings 1929, but it's the Jubilee cycles and knowing how many there are. There are 120 of them. And, you're, and we're in the final one now. And you're counting by 49s. And you're counting by 49s. Yes, not 50. And it says, it says in Daniel 9, in the middle, in the middle of the 70th week, Israel will be cut off and be as if they never existed. When it says Israel, it's talking, it's the anointed, the Mashiach, the anointed. It's not the Messiah, it's Israel. It's all 12 tribes, of which Judah, the state of Israel, is but one. The United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, England, Ireland, Wales, Scotland, Norway, Finland, Sweden, uh, Denmark, Belgium, France, and there's probably more, Switzerland. These are all Israelite nations. They will be cut off and be as if they never existed. That comes in the middle of the 70th week. That comes in the middle of this Jubilee cycle. So between 1996 and 2044, that middle point is 2020. So there's so many things that line up with 2020 that repeat over and over and over again. So now, reverse engineering. When I say reverse engineering, you have a fixed date that you know means something. Mm -hmm. So in order to get to that date, you must count backwards in time. So if 2020, Israel's going to be cut off, what else is going on? Well, that happens to be the fourth curse. The fourth curse of Jehovah in Leviticus 26, if you don't keep the sabbatical and jubilee years, I will send a sword on you. Mm -hmm. That starts in 2017 and goes to 2023, but Israel's going to be cut off in the middle of it. And that 2020 is also the beginning of the 2300 days of when Israel, all the, those who are left over, will be hunted and killed. The hunters are coming. So this 2020 is very key. Now, there's a prophecy, Psalm 83, that all these nations are planning against Israel, and in them is Assyria. All these Arab nations, they're going to wipe Israel off the face of the earth, but in there is Assyria. Okay, we have another coughing fit. Take over for a second. So so basically what, what we're what we're talking about here is how important it is to understand the chronology and and you know that's I was talking about sabbatical cycles but but it does second kings 1929 gives us that jubilee year as well as part of the sign and so the beautiful thing about this is when we when we understand when these years are we're able to count forward and backwards and find significant events in history and in the future and 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 the cool thing about the the jubilee cycles per se is is exactly what Joseph's describing here the, these weeks these uh, in Hebrew shabua right it, it's it's a it's a period of time and it doesn't necessarily we've translated it as week and and sadly people have have totally created absolute <laughs> false ideologies because of that translation and not studying what that word means and and if you don't have the grasp on the chronology then, then it, it's it, it's literally like you're you're. Uh, I don't even you're, I don't even have a good analogy there. You're guessing. <laughs> you're, you're, I mean, it's just absolute guessing. Yeah, well, you're guessing Making things up. <laughs> See, the feast of Pentecost is called the feast of weeks. Yeah, it's also called the feast of oaths, and the feast of forty nines. So, knowing that it's called the feast of weeks, this jubil the 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 seventy weeks of Daniel is the seventy. 49s. And that's how you understand it. It's 70 Jubilee cycles. So anyway, that's that's how we got that all figured out. But Israel's going to be cut off at this time. So again, back, you know, I'm having a coughing fit. I'm coming down with a cold, so I apologize. Um, but Israel is going to be cut off. So you have to reverse engineer. How's that going to be set up? Psalm 83, Assyria. Well, how's that going to take place? Now you go to Daniel 8. Again, we've been talking about Daniel 8 in our newsletter and uh, just world events are just telling us Daniel 8, Daniel 8, Daniel 8 all the time. Yeah. Daniel 8 is the, the ram 
which is Persia. It's got the two horns. The second horn comes up bigger than the first. That's what I believe is Isis, the Caliphate. The first horn is Iran itself. The goat is Europe. The ram is going to butt at the goat. That butting, that butting means war. In Daniel uh, 11, they talk about the king of the north and the king of the south. The king of the south is going to butt at the king of the north. Again, referring to Daniel 8. This butting is warring. That's what took place in Paris last weekend. Yeah. Now we got Tunisia being attacked today. Uh, we we got I got a report from Bali today that people are being uh, two hotels are under bomb threats there. Huh. So this Islam thing is pushing north, south, east, and west. That's what it says in, in about the ram. It's going to butt and push all over the place. But there's something else here, and we talked about it, and we're going to talk about it again. Uh, but we're running out of time, so we'll continue in the second half. But this. He wants to destroy, this ram wants to attack Rome. Because Rome is their ideological thing. They, they, they attacked Rome in 846 uh, Common Era, during the Ottoman time, I believe, or before the Ottomans. But they attacked Rome, and they looted it. They want to do that again. But it says something in Daniel 8, that when this ram but the goat or but Europe is going to come against it with many ships like a whirlwind. Huh. We aren't seeing that yet. But we did see something that took place here uh, this week or last Friday or maybe on the weekend. I forget when it took place. But the United Nations now made it legal for all of the UN, all of NATO to fight against ISIS. Wow. Yeah, well, we're, we're out of time for the first half. We'll be right back. Hang tight, and uh, we'll be right back after these messages. Sighted Moon. For articles, videos, and updates, visit sightedmoon.com. Discover the hidden Israelite ancestry of some of the most powerful nations on Earth. Watch as Scripture unveils the terrifying future of America and Great Britain as revealed through the sabbatical and jubilee years. Discover the identity of Assyria and its role in this final jubilee cycle. Learn of the pending judgments that are to be soon poured out as a result of transgressing the sabbatical years. Sighted Moon. All right. Well, we are back, and right before the break, we were we were just kind of getting going on the idea of Daniel eight and the ram and the goat and the 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 word budding and. 